All right, so what is the Ottawa Tool Library about? Let's find out with uh, Shelley Taylor, the project coordinator with the Ottawa Tool Library. Hello. Hi, Dylan. Thanks for having nice me. Nice to have you here. We've had Ottawa Tool Library on the show before. Probably. But it's been a while. <laughs> Um, yeah. And in case people are finding it about uh, this uh, for the first time, what exactly is the Ottawa Tool Library? That sounds pretty cool. It's very cool. We've been around for a few years. The Ottawa Tool Library is a library like a book library, except for we loan tools to our members. So we have tools for carpentry, uh, garden and yard work, kitchen work, mm -hmm. textiles, crafting, all kinds of tools. So who came up with this uh, concept? Uh, there was two founders, mm -hmm. um, Bettina and Frederick, and they have um, they have. Uh, wide number of supporters behind them for this. Of course, it takes a team yeah. to put together uh, a project like this. Okay, so in the early days, let's go back four years ago, I mean, how many tools were available then compared to what you have now on hand? Well, we've only been open for about two years, oh, just two over years. two okay. years, yep. And uh, currently, we have about 1,800 tools. Wow. And they've almost all been donated. Really? So it's a real, yeah, a real community project. That's something. Mm -hmm. So it's grown, obviously. Quite yes, a bit. absolutely. And okay. our space at Makerspace North keeps uh, growing as well yes. as we do. City center. That's City right. center, exactly. Okay. So the repair cafe is uh, coming up, and we have some footage. Uh, I'm guessing. How many years has the repair cafe been around for? Just this is going to be our third. We've third year. only we've only done two of them so far. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's a new project for us. Good. We see some of the footage. I'm guessing from uh, one of the uh, the last uh, uh, repair cafes. Uh, what exactly does a repair cafe? That, that's kind of cool. That's very cool as yeah. well. Obviously, it's what happens there? The repair cafe. Um, it's a concept out of the Netherlands. In 2009, the first repair cafe um, hit the world, and now there's repair cafes all over the the world. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, you bring something to a repair cafe that you want fixed or mended, and you meet with someone who's good at fixing or mending things, and they show you how to fix it yourself. So you can either sit with them and learn how to fix it, or you can watch. Um, them as they fix it. It's but it, as interactive as it, as you want it to be. But it's a skill share basically. Okay. So now this is happening at Foster Farm Community Center mm -hmm. in Nepean. Uh, is there an admission price to get into the repair cafe? No. Nope. Repair cafes are, cafes are completely free, um, and there's lots to do there. If people um, just want to come and meet up with some of their neighbors, they can come and have a snack or a cup of coffee. There's a kids corner. Um, we have at this next repair cafe, actually at Foster Farm, uh, we have a, a free uh, group demo. Um, very short, very informal. It's very, uh, uh, it's open to anyone, mm -hmm. and it's on understanding your home electricity. So it's a real uh, beginner's guide to understanding electrical in the home. That's interesting. So, yeah. so you're saying there's workshops and, and talks happening at the repair cafe as well. There's this one yeah. talk for so sure. Usually, it's just a one-on-one -on -one Skillshare. Um, so we're definitely doing that, and people can bring a really wide variety of things with them to get okay. fixed. I brought a few things as examples today. Okay. Broken things that I'm going to get fixed at the next repair cafe. Would you like to show us some of your sure, broken things? Sure, I sure will. Okay. Um, <laughs> I I'm not extremely handy myself. Okay, so let's. But I've learned a lot. Let's have a look here. Yep. I've brought a few things, and I've learned a lot at the last repair cafe. Okay, so we're looking um, at a hair dryer. We're looking here. at a hair dryer. So I'm going to use the hair dryer actually as a, as the first example. Um, so what I learned when you go to a repair cafe is the first thing they'll do is they will plug it in, because often what's wrong with your appliance is that uh, you haven't plugged it into a working plug. Okay. Fixed. So easy, right? Second thing they'll do is shoot some compressed air into an appliance to see if there's just something in the way. Okay. So again, very easy fix. Um, and then third, what they'll do, if it's still not working, they'll unplug it and they'll use their tiny little screwdrivers and they'll open it up and then it'll be sort of a, um, a description of what you might find inside. So the person who's brought something to get fixed can learn how the interior of a small appliance, like a hair dryer or a toaster works. Okay. Now you say it sounds easy or, or easy fix, but if I was to plug something in and it didn't work, Yep. Um, I wouldn't even know where to go from there, quite honestly. So that's, I mean, that's why yeah, it's important to have events exactly, like this. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, sk sharing these skills uh, means we can reduce landfill and um, we can learn things that, you know, our grandparents and our great-grandparents all knew how to do. They knew how to mend socks and they knew how to fix small things around the house because they had to. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to reduce uh, consumerism. Um, and really um, bolster the sharing economy. Mm -hmm. it, and it is funny because I think we're in, a, in an age where people don't know how to do a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. therefore landfills are getting 
uh, more and more Absolutely. full. So it, it should yeah. be the opposite. We should know more about this stuff because the landfills can't be getting full because the world can be in trouble some days. <laughs> okay, true. so uh, are you looking for people to drop by to help you? That you call them menders? Menders or fixers. So menders are someone who could say uh, fix a sock. They could darn a sock, for instance, um, or fix a hem with a sewing machine or by hand. And fixers basically fix everything else. Mm -hmm. um, and we are still looking for menders and fixers and other volunteers. And they can contact the tool library either through uh, social media or through our website um, to connect with me, and I would give them a job happily. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> That's good. That's very good to hear. So how would the Ottawa Tool Library work then exactly? Mm -hmm. um, so, so for starters, you're out of city centre. We are, and we're a member-based uh, library, and we're volunteer-driven. So um, people can buy um, an annual membership for $60, and if someone can't afford a membership, um, they can work as a volunteer for two short shifts a month uh, means that the next month would be they would have a free membership. Oh, nice. So our shifts are three and a half hours. It's very accessible to become a volunteer at the Tool Library. We're always looking for, you know, outgoing and uh, sort of uh, nice people to be tool librarians. They don't mm -hmm. have to have a lot of knowledge about tools. We have other people who know more about tools, um, but just people who um, want to come and uh, learn more about the library and be involved in the library can, mm -hmm. can certainly do that. And you're saying so many tools, did you say 1,800 tools? About that, roughly? yes. Changes all the time. I know you brought a couple in <laughs> there on the end here, but yeah. that's, I mean, those are everyday tools that yes. you see uh, uh, hammers and, and We have a lot of very fancy powered tools as Some well. Fancy we, stuff as well. Yes. We have those kinds of tools. We have every kind of drill you can imagine, but we also have lots of power tools that would be extremely expensive or take up a lot of space in someone's home. So um, those are the kind of tools, especially, I think, that members are really, members come to use. We have leaf blowers. We have... Um, you know, crockpots, we have all kinds of things, but sometimes I think the bigger, more expensive power tools are a real draw for people. Mm -hmm. um, and we have time, we have maker space uh, on maker days and maker nights where people who are members can come and work on projects in our space as well. So mm -hmm. besides the repair cafe, we run um, maker space and we also run community and demo nights that are open to everyone. So you can come and learn how to mend a sock at a community demo night or learn how to sharpen a knife or learn to use wood burning tools. Mm -hmm. We do a really wide variety of demo nights. That's very cool. I like this. OttawaToolLibrary.com for more details, of course, on what yeah. you do. And for this uh, repair cafe happening Saturday, February 24th, you can learn how to use some tools. I could use some help in that area. I think you I'm not going to lie to you. You should join us <laughs> for sure. Shelly okay. Taylor, thank you so much for being thank here today. Thank you very today. much for having me. More daytime coming up in moments. Uh, who is Mr. Cool? We've got the details next on Rogers TV.